Welcome to Helping Today's Woman. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly Williams. As always, this show was designed to help women become champions of their own health care. Tonight, we're going to take on a topic that many women deal with, but few want to discuss. And that's the whole idea of urinary incontinence or urinary leakage. Now, a lot of women will say, well, I thought that was just a normal part of aging. Or, you know what, that's just the result of having a number of kids. And although that is true, there are some real treatments and some real options to prevent and also to help treat those patients that are dealing with it. Tonight, we're very blessed to have with us Dr. Barry Jarnigan, who is a urogynecologist, which means he deals not only with the urinary tract, he also deals with the pelvic organs. He is also the director of the Center for Pelvic Health that is a division of the St. Thomas Health Services. Now, Barry's been with us before, so I want to reintroduce him and say thank you for coming to uh, join us today. Um, I kind of want to start at the very beginning, and that is I want you to give us a little bit of an idea of the different types of incontinence that are out there. Well, first of all, thank you for having me back. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And I want to uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk about something that, as you commented on, most women don't want to talk about. Um, in fact, many women are referred to our practice and still don't want to talk about it once they get there, even though that's the purpose of the visit. So this is a difficult thing for them to talk about. The other thing that you mentioned that I want to emphasize is it is a very common problem. Yes. And because most women think that they're either all alone or it doesn't happen very often. It's very common. The types of incontinence. The first and the most uh, common type of incontinence is a type of incontinence called stress urinary incontinence. And that is where when women cough, sneeze, laugh, any kind of pressure movement towards the abdomen pelvis will cause them to leak urine. That, the, one of the most common causes of that is childbearing. That doesn't mean it's normal, but it is a common cause. There's other causes that are related to that, and women can have incontinence, even urinary incontinence, even if they haven't had childbearing. The second most common type is called urge type incontinence, which is where it is the got to go, got to go, got to go phenomena that right. women have heard on TV before, and they just merely cannot wait till they get to the bathroom before they leak, a sudden spurt, if you will. There's a third type of incontinence called mixed incontinence, and as it is described, is a combination or both types of incontinence, both stress and urge incontinence, exist in those women. And so they actually have two different types of incontinence. There's another type of incontinence called overflow incontinence, and that is where women can't empty their bladder, and so they're walking around with a full bladder all the time, <coughs> and any time it is tipped, if you will, much like a full glass of water, it will leak. And so they will have the same symptoms as women who have stress incontinence, so the symptoms are the same, but the cause is much different. And do we know what the cause of that last type is? It's, it's where their bladder doesn't contract and empty their bladder. So they actually have urinary retention or partial urinary retention so that they never completely empty their bladder. So they walk around three-fourths full, if you will, and when they do go to the bathroom, they only void a little bit. And so they think they're voiding fine, but they're really not. And so it's a neurologic problem typically related to the uh, inadequate contraction of the bladder muscle. Now we also talked a little bit about urge incontinence. You mentioned it a second ago. What are some of the causes for urge incontinence? We've mentioned that childbearing is a cause for stress. What about urge incontinence? What are some of the causes of that? That's one? a great question. And there is some debate as to whether this is primarily neurologic, primarily muscular related to the muscle of the bladder itself mm -hmm. or some combination. And, and Typically, it's going to be one or the other or the combination, and, my, and rather than it being a debate, I think it's probably a combination. So it's a neuromuscular dysfunction, if you will, of the bladder. Well, as we always see in medicine, things aren't as simple as we want them to be. Oftentimes, you want to say, it's this one thing or it's this one thing, but a lot of times, it's a combination, and a lot of times, these arguments or concerns really are that there's not one or the other. It's, it's a combination of both. One of the things that women don't realize is that even though the bladder is a fairly simple organ, it's mm -hmm. designed to relax and fill, contract and empty. That's really the only two functions it has, but it's very complex in the function of those two. 
in mm -hmm. that anything that can disrupt the nerves from the brain down the back out to the bladder, anything that disrupts that circuitry can cause urinary incontinence. Well, let me ask something else because I want to turn this to a little bit. What about the patient that says, well, my mom had leakage, you know, it wasn't something she talked about a lot, but as I started talking to her, she said, I, I had leakage. Are they more susceptible to develop it if their mom had it or their grandmother or an aunt? How does that work? Well, there's certain tendencies that pass down from generation to generation. And so you're accurate on all types of incontinence. Women who have stress-related incontinence, tend to, they have a tendency to have weak areas along the urethra. And so their ability to develop uh, weakness related to trauma, i.e. childbirth, is gonna be much more than the lady who doesn't have that type of tendency. So part of that is genetic makeup, if you will. So some women are more prone to have injury at the child, time of childbirth than others. Now, what do you say to the patient who says, and I have this all the time, well, I thought this was just a part of childbirth. You know, everybody's supposed to go through this. What do you say to that patient? I, I tell women that it is a common condition that occurs, but it's never normal. It's never normal to leak urine. And so while the condition is common, and it does occur more frequently in women who have had childbirth uh, or in women who've had multiple childbirth, it's not normal. And so we need to look at trying to correct it so that she can live a normal life. The truth is these women suffer terribly and it's been shown that women who have urinary incontinence have much more problems with depression and social functioning because it really truly impacts every aspect of their quality of life. And I've seen this with my patients. I've had patients come to me, one of the most, one that sticks in my mind, she loved to dance. I had a patient that said, I love to square dance, but I can't go square dancing anymore because I have this incontinence issue. And it's amazing what you can do for these patients to make them better. And it's not always a dramatic, it's always a dramatic fix, but the fix is very dramatic. In other words, the results are oftentimes very, very dramatic. It gives them their life back. And yes. That, they're imprisoned by this condition and it gives them their life back and a lot of times they don't realize that they have kind of succumbed if you will to their condition and they've quit doing all these things and then once you correct their problem and they're able to get back out and do the things that they enjoy doing they come back and they go i i didn't realize that it affected me that much well, we've had a great discussion. We're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we're going to talk about one of the specific types of urinary incontinence that we were discussing earlier. We'll see you after these messages. Welcome back to Health in Today's Woman. Tonight, we're talking about urinary incontinence or urinary leakage, and I'm being joined by Dr. Barry Jonigan, who is a urogynecologist and the medical director for the Center for Female Pelvic Health, which is the division of the St. Thomas Health Services in Cool Springs. And Barry, on our first segment, we talked a little bit about some of the different types of urinary incontinence. In this segment, I really want to focus in on one type, and that is this type of stress urinary incontinence. Can you give us kind of a little bit of a refresher, we talked about a little bit earlier, about what stress urinary incontinence is? Again, stress incontinence is when there is a weakness along the urethra, and everybody wants to talk about their bladder, but really, it's a weakness at the level of the urethra. And so the urethra is traumatized at the time of childbirth or prior surgery or some other reason and so there's a weakness there so when there is abdominal strain i.e. laugh sneeze cough some sort of abdominal strain then they will the the pressure inside the bladder will overcome that weakness and they'll leak urine now i want to take a second here just to explain one thing now the urethra carries urine from the bladder out so a lot of people get confused, but the bladder out. So we're talking about the bladder, urethra, and then the outside. So it's a weakness in that area. Correct. Now, is there any medical treatment for this condition? There, there is a uh, medicine that has been tried in these patients, but there, and it does have some efficacy. And in women who just cannot have any kind of surgery, it's something that could be tried. Typically, though, the side effects are, are not uh, something that the patient is willing to accept. And so it's not used very often. Now, that would lead us to the second part, which is the fact that this is a surgical fix. It is a surgical fix, but it can be, there are office procedures, uh, minor procedures that <clears throat> can be helpful in treating urinary incontinence. Women can come in and have what's called a bulking agent, where some medicine is put 
around the urethra and it will help bulk that area up and they will get uh, resolution of their incontinence uh, just by a simple office procedure. Now, the downside is it doesn't always work, but the plus side is they can come in, they can have the procedure, and they can literally be shopping in the mall an hour later. There is no recovery time. So that's the advantage of it. And so it's quick, it's simple, it's easy. There really isn't any real risk to it. It's more a matter of will it work, will it not. Now, I want to get to the devices that we have, but I want to mention one other thing first, and that's the idea of Kegel exercises. A lot of people are told about these. Can you give me a real brief understanding of what Kegel exercises are? Kegel exercises are the muscles that surround the pelvic floor, and it's a matter of contracting those muscles, and those muscles will tighten uh, in and around the urethra and pelvis and help hold back the urine, if you will. It's kind of like when people, always, people don't think about the pelvis mus pelvic muscles, but they know all the muscles around the knees. People know that they have, if they have knee injury, they'll rehab the muscles around the knee mm -hmm. to try to prevent having to have surgery on their knee. It's the same concept. They want to rehab, if you will, the muscles surrounding the pelvis to try to help compensate for that weakness along the urethra. And it's highly effective. Either Kegel exercises, there are things that we can use to help women with Kegel exercises. Okay. Vaginal cones can be very helpful where there are little weights that you can put in the vagina and squeeze on and it gives the patient uh, the ability to note whether they're squeezing the right muscles or not. Okay. Now I want to get to these because I want to make sure we get to do these. Now this, I want you to hold it here. Tell us a little bit about this because this is one of the surgical treatments for uh, stress urinary incontinence. This is, to to this is a sling type device and it's, it's one of the newer sling devices and it's what's called a single incision sling where there's only one little incision about this big in the, in the vagina right over the urethra. Okay. And then this fits in, and if you use my finger as the urethra, it fits in just around the uh, urethra like that. And uh, it's a fairly simple way of fixing um, urinary incontinence. Uh, it's outpatient, women come in, they have it done, they go home the same day. Uh, most women who have this done tell me they rarely hurt, uh, that the only okay. reason they know they had surgery is because their leaking is gone. And this is done in the office or this is done in the operating room? This is done in an operating room, okay. but as an outpatient where they come in the morning, go home a couple hours later. We're thinking about looking at doing these in the office, but we haven't moved there yet. But it's a fairly simple, easy way of treating urinary incontinence if they have, um, you know, a mild to moderate type incontinence. Okay, I want to make sure we get to this other device because you're one of the only people I've ever heard who does this and this is something I want to talk about. This is a device that you can use for a patient who's had really severe incontinence that's not getting better that allows you to address this a little bit easier. I want you to explain that to the, us. I use this, this type of sling in two occasions. One is exactly what you described, the most severe type where the, and the urethra is depicted as this kind of tube here but where the urethra just doesn't work at all. Okay. That would be one way, one reason. The other one is in women, and this is for those women who are out there who have had surgery and for whatever reason it didn't work. We know that with these type slings, the success rate is about 85%, okay. which is very good, 85 out of 100, but there's 15% of women who don't get help. And in those women, they, you still can get help, and that's where this comes in. Okay. And this sling works in people who've had prior surgery, but it didn't work for whatever reason. Um, and this is called an adjustable sling, and the sling fits down, and I think I can get it off here. But the sling, the sling fits down under the urethra, and this is the, depicted as the abdominal wall. And so the sling goes down under the urethra okay. and it comes up to the abdominal wall and then they actually go home with this little plastic device uh, coming out and taped around it like this and they come back to the office and we put this little screwdriver in and you actually can adjust this sling and that's why it's called an adjustable. Okay. You adjust this sling until they're dry. And okay. so it's virtually 100% effective. Um, and so you adjust this sling and then once uh, you get them dry, then you merely just pop this off, and they have this little, what I call a button, they have this little button here sitting just under their pubic bone. Okay. And so they go around, and so if years later their urethra gets worse, 
or whatever, just reattach. you just reattach this and you tighten it up a little bit more. And so it's there's always a way to make them continent. We're going to be back right after these messages and then we'll address this a little bit further. So we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Helping Today's Woman. Tonight we're talking about a topic that many women don't want to discuss, and that's the whole idea of urinary incontinence or urinary leakage. In our last segment, we talked about a specific type of incontinence called the stress incontinence. In this segment, we're going to take a little bit of a turn and talk about urge incontinence. This is the, as Dr. Jarnigan said in the first segment, the go, go, go. The patient that can get to the bathroom and knows every bathroom between here and the mall. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the ways that we can treat that type of incontinence. So Barry, why don't you give us a little bit of a basic understanding of what urge incontinence is and then what are some of the basic treatments that we can use? Okay, again, urge incontinence is when there is some neuromuscular dysfunction uh, at the microscopic level that causes the bladder not to fill properly. So they just can't hold as much as they should be able to. And when they reach a certain volume, and everybody's different depending on the severity of their problem, when they reach a certain volume, their bladder will have a spontaneous contraction and they will leak. And so that's, the, that's what's called urge incontinence. Okay. And how we treat that, we first start with, you can do physical therapy. Physical therapy works in both types of incontinence. Okay. Uh, and then you move into medical treatment and there's a lot of medication on the market. There's eight to ten medications currently on the market that can be utilized for uh, urge incontinence. And people go, well, which one's the best one? And it's kind of like, you know, if hypertensive meds and um, Motrin versus Naproxen, everybody responds differently to different medications. So there's not a best one. It's a matter of finding the right medication for the right person. And so you try that, and there are side effects that can occur with those type of medicines. The most common are dry mouth, uh, and some women can get constipation. And of course, the constipation can make the urge incontinence worse. But, uh, but those are the kinds of medications that we utilize uh, to treat. And some women will do very well on those medicines, and some women uh, will fail on those medicines. And one of the common complaints that I hear is, well, Dr. Williams, why are you giving me something that's going to make my mouth dry when I'm already having a hard time with peeing all the time, which makes me want to drink more? So, you know, it's kind of a catch-22 here. A, We're trying to give you something to help you, mm -hmm. but sometimes we make it worse. That's ex no, that's exactly right. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why many women who develop those symptoms just simply don't stay on the medication. And that's a great point. And that's one that we want to take to the next step because there is a new device. For years, as a women's health specialist, basically what we had to do is we basically told people, you know what, you're not getting better. There's not much we can do about it. Well, today we've actually got some devices and some new technology that really can treat these patients in a way that we haven't done before. And so I want you to kind of go through this because I think this device is such an important device. And w describe to us what it is and describe to us in a patient that it would be used in. In the simplest uh, way of describing it, it is a pelvic floor slash bladder pacemaker. Uh, and it's made by a company who makes heart pacemakers. And for women who who uh, have either had a heart pacemaker or who know somebody who has, it's a little small battery, but instead of going up in their chest cavity, it actually goes into their <coughs> lower back. And we have a um, kind of a lower back model here, and you can see here, and it's, and this actually ultimately is implanted uh, below the waistline, but, but above where you sit, and it goes underneath the skin, so everything is underneath the skin, and this permanent wire feeds through there and we're going to be able to turn this over. You can't do this at home, but, and it goes out, and it doesn't go into the back, but it comes out to into the nerve that goes around and feeds the bladder. So this, this lead wire lays down right along the nerve, so it modulates the nerve. And so if the bladder is wanting to contract too much, it'll slow it down. This also works in overflow incontinence. Okay. Uh, so this works in women who are not emptying properly, and it'll help them em empty better, which will reduce their overflow incontinence. And so this lays down along the nerve just like that. The exciting part of this and the timeliness of doing this show today is we have now moved. The f this is done in two phases, where phase one you put the wire in, and in phase two you put the battery in. Okay. Two outpatient surgical procedures. But now... I don't know if you can get a get a close up of this or not, but this is see how small that is. 
This is a small wire that we actually can put, do the test in the office. Oh, wow, okay. And so we can do the test in the office with this little small wire. And so we can, if it works, then we can bypass that first hospital outpatient visit and go straight to just one visit in the hospital to put the battery and everything in. That's great. So we now can do this in the office and the ones that we're doing in the office again tell me that they really are not, ha I mean it, they're, it's very well tolerated. Okay. Um, it's, it's, a, it's you know less really than a blood stick. I mean it's really, you can see how thin and fine this is. It's a really small wire. It goes in under local um, and um, it it saves, again, it saves the lady from having to have two hospital outpatient visits and we can go to just one. And so if it works, we put this in and if it doesn't, then the wire comes out and we try something different. I have to tell you, I've had patients who've been through this and for patients who are dealing with urinary incontinence who once thought there was no options, this is a great option. We will be right back after these messages. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. We've had a great discussion about urinary incontinence and have been very blessed to have Dr. Barry Jarnigan, who is a urogynecologist and the medical director for the Center for Pelvic Health in Cool Springs, which is a division of the St. Thomas Health System. Now, Barry has done some very interesting uh, devices that are not done by everybody. So if y'all have any problems with this, please contact him at this number. Thank you, and as always, please contact a physician of your choice for any medical problems. Good night and thank you very much. <music>